Welcome back, you filthy exiles, and in this case, you last Evo Epoch players. Now, obviously, you've looked at the game, and you've went, hey, this looks like a really cool game. Uh, only problem, I don't know anything about this game. Well, that was me, basically, probably the 15 times that I've picked it up and put it back down again and whatnot. So I thought I'd do a bit of a list of, uh, uh, like, five tips you could take to uh, starting last Epoch. And, uh, and how to approach it. And fundamentally, like, these are really basic things, and this list is probably more targeted at very new players, ARPGs, and sometimes those experienced players need to have a bit of a rehash about the fundamentals. But anyway, these are just five things to make the experience a little bit more enjoyable from League Launch, or from 1.0 Launch in this case. So, uh, yeah, let's get into the video, and let's have a talk about them. Okay, so one of the first questions you're going to be asking is, you have access to all these really cool masteries and skills and whatnot, as we can see in the passive tree, and you're going to be like, how do I actually get to unlock these? Like, when do I unlock these? If you're a new player just looking at the footage, looking at other builds, and you're like, hey, uh, but I don't have this available to me at level one, what the hell is going on? Well, this is actually available at the end of Act 1, more or less the equivalent end of Act 1, which would be through however the system works that your guess is as good as mine. Um, but basically by about level 15 is when you get access to your secondary masteries. Now, the one comment I'd make here is do not forget to apply your secondary masteries. So you would level up like 15 points in this case, level 21. I put in 21 points in here um, and basically just targeted nodes that I really wanted to to build my build up and attack for particular points I wanted, i.e. Dark Rituals gives my minions attack speed, which I need for a minion based build. Um, and then Crimson Gluttony, for some reason I put this in, this is mainly to increase health regeneration. Um, and then Soul Aegis, so you know, minion scale armor, they basically stack armor, makes it really tanky. Then I realized like there's no benefit to capping out this tree, and because I had access to this from Act 1 at level 15 or roundabouts, I was able to then apply my Necromancer nodes. Um, and then basically, yeah, uh, Risen Army, I was able to get Grave Thorns, um, which depends on whatever variant you're playing of a build, i.e. Lich gets access to, you know, various different skills. But, just something to keep in mind, if it's sort of, you blaze through it and you don't realise you've got access to it, it's a good way to get, number one, access to more skills that are available to different archetypes, um, and also access to more points, which will increase the power of your build. If your build's feeling underpowered and not quite meeting expectations, that could be one thing to look at as a new player. Don't forget to do that. And you will also get a prompt if you go upstairs. I'm pretty sure you go to this particular area before you progress, or a very similar area. Um, and basically, you'll talk to, I think it was like, this guy here, the Elder uh, Gaspar. And then basically, you'll get access to your additional mastery and then you can go from there anyway that's tip number one don't forget to apply your additional mastery you get a lot of power from that and you can then start specializing your build okay so another thing to keep in mind when my golem stops running around in a circle like an idiot there we go all right is making sure that you are constantly forging on the go and what i mean by this is you can literally do that by forging on the go so one thing here is my Defile Bones of Purity Relic here is not really buffing my minions off the way that I wanted to and giving me all the stats that I want. Uh, whereas this has an implicit with minion health, minion speed, minion damage built into it, as well as all resist while channeling. We can probably change that health effectiveness and things like that. Now, the idea here, can we upgrade this gear to make my character stronger on the fly? which is something that we'll try here. So, for example, we can basically remove random affix. So, yep, we can do that as well. We can remove that. So now we have lightning and intelligence resistance. To intelligence, obviously we're not resistant to intelligence, but uh, we also have lightning res, right? So now we can go craft on some more minion stats here, for example, potentially. Um, and I'm still learning where my stats are. Minion damage, right? So we're going to add affix onto that. Uh, forging potential is now zero, but is this better than what I'm running? Well, my existing item is probably still a hell of a lot better. Um, but this is something that you should be trying to do as you gear up, as you level up, all throughout the campaign and definitely into the end game. And it's something that people forget. They'll try and progress their build. 
but then realize, hey, I'm not keeping up for some reason. Why is my build weak? It's probably because your gear is not up to spec. So what you should do is look for things that are dropping on the ground and then try and recraft your gear where possible to try and get a better outcome. Now, what I found throughout the campaign was that in many, many parts of the campaign, i.e. after Act 1 or throughout, generally, if you start crafting into your required attributes to amp your build up, you'll notice a power spike at every single level. And this is something that new players will struggle with initially, but it's something just to keep in mind. One of the benefits of deterministic crafting in the Forge is, exa Forge is exactly that. Pick an item up off the ground, you can basically use it for anything that you want to use it for. or make you build a hell of a lot more powerful. But that's tip number two that I'd recommend players try is forge on the fly. Make sure you're keeping your gear up to up to spec with where it needs to be. And not just rely on unique drops as well, but rare gear really gets you over the line in this game as well. Okay, so as you progress through the game, you're inevitably going to run into Lagon. Now, Lagon is a terrible boss fight. Lagon uh, basically resets every time you die. Uh, you have to do it in one life. He is not the end game boss and is actually harder than the end game boss. Now, you're going to reach this boss. You're most likely going to get frustrated and for newer players, you're just going to give up. What I'm here to uh, tell you guys is don't give up. There's a way to get through this easier. Now, there's two stats that you need to watch out for with Lagon. Physical damage reduction, i.e. armor or block, can easily be solved. The other is cold resistance. Uh, and actually, he does some shock damage too, somewhere along the lines. But cold resistance is going to be the biggest one here. So basically, the easiest way to do this is look to cap your resistances early. Now, unlike certain games that are out there, i.e. Uh, Diablo... Um, resistances in Last Epoch, similar to Path of Exile, actually means something. And in this case, what we're looking at is character's screen. In particular, we're going to look at defenses. But understanding resistance capping is really important. So basically, you have seven different types of resistances here. Now, Void, Necrotic, um, Poison. Think of these as like your Poison um, sort of resist from Path of Exile, if you're savvy with that. Void is like chaos damage, which is different again to poison in essence. Probably is actually a little simpler in Path of Exile in this respect. Physical damage refers to, at least to what I understand, would be like your bleed dot sort of damage over time. Uh, obviously you have different stats, i.e. block, armor, um, block effectiveness, dodge, things like that, that stop you from getting hit and or deal with the damage that you, t that you, you know, take from getting hit. Um, and the effectiveness of armors and things like that. But I, for simplicity, like to think of the cardinal three resistances as the ones that you should predominantly focus on earlier on. Because when faced with seven, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare trying to figure that out. Especially if you're a newer player to the genre. Uh, so, in particular, when you do get to leg on, uh, you're going to look to cap this out by any means necessary. Doesn't matter how you do it. You can use chump gear, i.e. you can put in gear that's basically not really fit for what you're trying to do with the build, but that will stop you from dying. The other thing to bear in mind is non-res capping by the time you get to echoes and doing endgame is problematic because you're going to get randomly one hit from time and time again, uh, and that just means your defensive layering is not up to par with where it needs to be. So in particular for newer players, if you're dying a lot even as you're playing through the game, Look to cap your resistances, and the secondary to that point is, if you're dying to physical damage, things like that, look to put items onto your build that give you block chance, block effectiveness, stack up some armor, however you need to, and you're looking to try and um, cap out armor as high as, as, high as you can. Um, now, ward retention is very similar to energy shield and path of exile, which is a different stat altogether, and I'm still currently getting my head around that. But at this stage, go for that. Like, if you're going to die to poisons and stuff like that, be more focused about that when you get into later areas of the game. But definitely fire, lightning, and cold should be your focuses early on, and that would be tip number three for any new players looking to get into Last Epoch on 1.0. Now, the fourth tip that I'm going to give you here is when you start playing with new skills and builds and things like that, you're going to be tempted to put points all over the shop. Um, i.e. you're going to chuck one point here, one point here, you might chuck one point in here, one point in here, one point here, one point here to test that out. Um, I'm here to say, like, 
do that to experiment, but definitely do not do that as an end game priority. Unless you need to travel between the nodes, this is very like Titan Quest. So like you would have to travel between, you know, for example, to get to Veins of Power right on, on the Acolyte, you'd need to travel via Crimson Gluttony, but you may not necessarily need that point to travel to that point. Like that's generally the only time when you're going to be wanting to put one point in, unless it specifically is a stat that says one point. Now, the other thing I'd probably say is like, you might see some things in Lich and you're like, hey, mana regeneration would be nice. And yeah, you could definitely pick that up and multi-skill in that. And that's why these stats are actually quite nice. Um, but outside of that, avoid spreading your skill trees thin. And the reason being is the more consolidation into singular points, the more power you're going to get from those points, obviously. And that's going to make your build stronger earlier. You can respect these points. To respect points on your skill tree, you're going to want to go to the big brain area and then respecialize mastery points. And this will allow you to respect points at a cost of gold, more or less. So if I didn't want this, it would cost me X amount of gold from my stash. And that will increase over time the more that you want to respect points as well. It's relatively easy to rebuild characters and respect characters. All I'm saying is initially, if you want that early boost in power, don't spread your points so thin, but consolidate them down make your character more powerful by controlling the number of points that you put into allocated areas and be a little more strategic about it that being said when you first pick up the game you're going to be all over the shop ticking every little button every left right and center to figure out what everything does go crazy you can fix it at any time but when you get to the point when you've fixed it and you're ready to consolidate your build down and actually make it a little more powerful then this is a good way to do that and just something to keep in mind as a tip for newer players uh, same issues happen with like Diablo 4 on launch, Path of Exile is even worse. Um, you put points all over the tree without actually knowing, you know, how it's going to uh, sort of affect your build. It's actually not too bad in Last Epoch in this respect because in, if you compare it to Path of Exile, there's like nowhere near the level of complexity. Um, and it's very much like TQ, so, and the skills natively scale up as well, depending on the points you put into it, and the gearing's a big factor of how skills level up as well. Um, D4, that's not even really a skill tree, and actually D4 would have benefited from something like this, instead of what it tried to do, which was match Path of Exile, and undoubtedly fail at doing that. Uh, anyway, uh, this is my fourth tip for anyone starting out in Last Epoch, um, looking to try and get their builds up and running and working. Okay, so the last tip that I'm going to give you is actually something that I wouldn't normally sort of put in uh, videos, considering I'm very big on build guides. But uh, it's, don't necessarily worry about following a build guide with this game. So, this game is casual enough, and skills scale well enough, and that actually draws out an issue that currently exists with Path of Exile, which is, skills don't necessarily easily sort of level up and balance and scale in Path of Exile versus this game, which arguably makes this a better game as far as skill scaling than Path of Exile could ever be right now, um, which is probably being overly critical. But uh, in particular, it's not a bias remark to make because I'm very much a lover of Path of Exile through and through. But this game feels really good playing any skill you basically invest into and play which I actually find to be a really good quality of Last Epoch, basically means that a lot of players more than often want to make their own builds, and you can do that in this game. Uh, so I'd actually challenge you to, instead of, obviously do the research to find out what skills fit your play style, what skills you find interesting, and most of all, what skills you find fun, and then go with it, play it, invest into it, and, uh, and just enjoy the game for what it is. Uh, now, some skills are a little more janky than others, and funnily enough, that makes this game a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, more jank is not a bad thing when the overall game and the mechanics are actually put together quite well, and Last Epoch does really well in basically balancing skills out, at least, you know, at a sort of visible level, and, uh, and making everything playable uh, for any player that attempts to achieve it. Now, obviously learning crafting things like that there are levels of complexity to this but overall like from what i've seen the number of builds that you can play in this game is unparalleled unlike other games and i keep referring to that only have like two or three skills that each class specialize in 
basically any skill that you equipped in this game to a degree can be played into the end game and uh, and you can have a lot of fun doing so so anyway tip number five don't worry so much about build guides uh, just enjoy playing the game learn the game and you'll find skills that you find really interesting and or really interesting in uni unique mechanics and interactions with unique items which will change the skill on the fly for you and go, boy, this is even more fun than the original skill itself. Itself. Okay, so I hope this video gave you some sort of tips, some insights. Uh, in particular, it's, I guess, more targeted at new players uh, or more casual players. But if you're more experienced, I hope this gives you a little more information about Last Epoch, a little bit more confidence in the game, and as an overall, gives you a little more guidance as to how to tackle it when you're first getting into the Last Epoch and figuring things out on the fly and on the go. Anyway, if you like this type of content, uh, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Don't forget to follow the Twitch. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the last Epoch in 1.0. I expect some more videos to come out in between then. And there's also some more PoE content I've got planned as well, because probably going to play some SSF and hardcore over the coming weeks anyway, leading up into the last Epoch launch. But uh, have a good one, and I'll see you guys later.